Uh, begin tonight in a word of prayer. Amen. And praise God. Ask God's blessings tonight. Amen. So let's bow our heads. Almighty God, we thank you, Lord, for your grace, your mercy tonight, Lord Jesus. We pray, O oh God, Father, now as we come, Lord, into this prayer time tonight. Lord, we pray that your Holy Spirit will come and abide with us, Lord, as we sing and worship. Praise your name, O oh God, and get into the Spirit now, Father. We pray that your anointing would sweep over us, Lord, and bless us our time of worship and praise. Bless our time of uh, sharing and hearing the word of God. We pray that your anointing would be upon your word tonight, Lord, and bless your speaker tonight as he, Lord, just for a few moments, Lord, as we just want to hold still, Lord, Father. Seek your face, Lord. Lord, and just to hear what you would, let your spirit say it unto us, O oh God, Father. Lord, we pray a blessed time of prayer, Lord, Father. Lord, we, bless, we pray a bless each one as they reach out to you, Lord. Lord, may you answer, O oh God, Father, in your own sweet way. And Lord, may you just have your way tonight. We pray and ask these things in your precious name. Amen and amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Let's just praise him now. Just close our eyes. Amen. And just get in the spirit tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Sweet hour of prayer. Sweet hour of prayer that calls me from. me mm-hmm. 
face Believe His word And trust His grace I'll cast on Him tonight My every care And wait for Thee Sweet hour of prayer And wait for Thee Sweet hour tonight. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Blessed be your holy name. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Come, Holy Spirit, I need thee. And come, sweet Spirit, I pray strength and my power oh Lord oh come in thine own gentle way oh come Holy Spirit I need thee Show it tonight. Come with your angels. Come with your presence. Lift your hands right where you are tonight. Close your eyes. Ask him to come in thy power, oh Lord. Oh, and come in thine own gentle way. Oh, more than ever. I want to tell you 
I need you now more than ever before. Oh, I need you now more than ever before. Oh, give him praise tonight. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Blessed be your holy name. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus never fails. Jesus never fails. Heaven and earth will pass away, but Jesus never fails. Oh, sing it. Jesus never fails. Jesus never fails. Oh, heaven and earth will pass away. But Jesus never fails, oh sing it, Jesus never fails, Jesus never fails, oh heaven and earth will pass away, but Jesus never fails, oh sing it, Jesus never fails, Jesus never fails, oh heaven and earth will pass away, but Jesus never fails, oh well, Jesus never fails. Jesus never fails. Heaven and earth will pass away, but Jesus never fails. Oh, and yes, Jesus loves me. Oh, and yes, Jesus loves me. Oh, yes, Jesus loves me. For oh, the Bible tells me so. One more time. Oh, singing Jesus. Jesus loves me. Oh, and yes, Jesus loves me. Oh, yes, Jesus loves me. For the Bible tells me so. Thank you, Brother Anthony, for oh, that song service tonight. Let us bow our heads as we want to pray. We have a prayer request from Sister Wendy Blades for the healing of my granddaughter's aunt. Her name is Kay. She is in the hospital with a tumor, and the doctors have given up hope for her recovery. Tonight, we also want to pray for Sister Kangli, who has been up in, her, in the hospital, she wasn't feeling well, and um, vomiting and, and dizziness and so on like that. And we just want to pray for her tonight. Let us bow our heads. Heavenly Father, we come to you and we are dependent upon you. As the song leader just sang, Jesus never fail. And one thing you can't do is fail. We trust you tonight. And Father God, we bring Lord, the uh, granddaughter's aunt of Sister Wendy, Lord, that you would visit her in the hospital and the tumor, the doctors give up. And right where they can't do anything, this is where you can come in on the scene right on in. Father, I pray that the angel of God will pass by her bed tonight and touch her, Lord, and may that tumor be dissolved. May that tumor oh God, be gone in the name of Jesus. May you free her, Father, and if she doesn't know you in salvation, may she come to know you in the power of your resurrection and salvation. Grant it, Lord, in Jesus' name I ask it. And Father, I pray, which is a kindly Lord, that you would visit her even now. Her husband with her, Brother George, I pray a blessing, Lord, and help them in the great hour of need. As we shared recently, that the bad times and rough times is not forever, and the bright skies and the bright clouds and everything else is not forever. Everything has a time and a season. And Father, in their rough, tough time at this point in time, you visit them with healing and strength. May all be well, and may it give Sister Kangli a touch in the crown of her head to the sole of her feet. Any person here? Oh God, I'm feeling well. May I visit them in a special way. In Jesus' name I ask it. Amen. I have one scripted read tonight. Matthew chapter 11, reading from 28 to 30. And Jesus speaks. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls. 
for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Maybe tonight you might be burdened out, burdened with family issues, stress, something troubling you, and you're heavy. But Jesus said, take my yoke upon you. There are two kinds of burdens. Burden of God and the burden of the devil. The burden of the devil is, is a hard one. Because at the end, after serving him, his whims and fancies and will, instead the devil, the wages of sin is still death. But the yoke of Jesus, you still find yourself with eternal life. Other title of this exhortation I want to give you tonight is The Burden of the Word That Leads to Prayer. That's what I want to share with you tonight. The Burden of the Word That Leads to Prayer. Okay, let's go. Here's a question somebody asked. Brother Branham. It seems among the ministers of the word that we have little or no burden to pray, to preach, to fast, or for lost souls that might still be out there somewhere in the world. Would you please tell us what to do about this condition? Thank you very much, Brother Brandon, for this. And he answers, that must be a minister. He didn't sign any name for these words. Brother, I, I had to answer them when I was tired and worn out and kind of, you know, don't feel too good. So I trust that it answered the question. I thank you very much, and I forgot what I was going to answer him. Then he continues. Preachers, a minister, why we have these burdens? Don't have a burden for lost souls. I believe it's a lacking of the revival. I believe we should still try to pray to God to give us passions for lost souls until Jesus comes. So even though it might be dry and hard, we should still continue to pray. Pray God for revival. Pray God to give a passion for lost souls. Pray God to go beyond you. Let's continue. Revelation 2.9. I know thy works and thy tribulations and poverty, but thou art rich. I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. Now the Lord God Almighty says, I know. There he is, walking in the midst of his people. There he is, the chief shepherd of the flock. But does he hold back the persecution? Does he stem the tribulation? No, he does not. He simply says, I know your tribulation. I am not at all unmindful of your suffering. What a stumbling block this is to so many people. Like Israel, they wonder if God really loves them. And how can God be just and loving if he stands by and watches people suffer? So I was amazed tonight, oh, Brother Anthony sing that song, uh, Yes, Jesus Loves Me, the Bible Tells Me So, because I knew what I had here. And speaking about, <laughs> speaking about um, love, I went to the bank today, I had some transaction, I pay on my credit card and some kind of things like that. And I had to get some money from elsewhere and put it together. And I got mixed up somehow. And I didn't realize I got mixed up. And I, I do what I normally do to pay on the credit card and stuff. And the girl was ticked Stay, stay, staying quite long and I didn't know why and I started to get a little irritated and I'm twisting and turning and things like that something telling me have the right attitude and I adjust and I take, a, take it easy and so on like that and after a while I recognize I give them the wrong amount so they had more money than they could account for and it was an amazing experience for me because here it is, I've never seen that girl before. Maybe she's a new person. So I tell myself, she is new. She must be, don't know what she's doing. And all kind of thoughts hit in my mind. But I realize it doesn't matter what the circumstances and what the challenges is. It's peace, not the right attitude. At the end of it all, I was wrong, not the girl. It caused, it, it was, it take up of 25 minutes when it was supposed to take about five, six minutes. And is after a while when I get settled now, I say, wait a minute. What I give you is not what I thought I give you. 
and we work it all out. But I say, I just shared it with you. So sometimes in going forward, when you think it might be somebody else, it might just be you. So I thank God for that lesson tonight of being patient and being understanding and just waiting and just watching. Even though, so even if she was new and fumbling, just like a new driver on the road, I was still supposed to have a level of patience and understanding. And it so happened that I was at fault. So that was a very interesting experience. So I'll share with you tonight. So let's continue. The burden, this, and this is a scripture now from Malachi chapter one. The burden of the word of the Lord to Israel by Malachi. I have loved you, saith the Lord. Yet we say, wherein hast thou loved us? Was not Esau Jacob's brother? And the Lord said, yet I love Jacob. And I hated Esau. And laid his mountain and heritage waste for the dragons of the wilderness. Here we go. Tonight. This is for us here tonight. You see, they could not figure out God's love. They thought that love meant no suffering. Believers, especially you here tonight who feel that you are entitled. I don't know what you think you might be entitled to. Or anybody that will hear this tape. Think you might be entitled to this, entitled to that, entitled to that. But let's hear closer what the Lord is saying here. They thought that love meant no suffering. They thought that love meant a baby with parental care. But God said that his love was elective love. The proof of his love is election. And no matter what happened, his love was proven truly by the fact they were chosen on the salvation because God had chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the spirit and belief of the truth. He may commit you to death as he did Paul. He may commit you to suffering as he did Job. That is his prerogative. Or many could say amen tonight. And you see, when you could say amen to this that's being presented, it means you are getting mature. Because you see, the younger and the baby and whatnot and the child wouldn't be able to grasp this just here. So because you're growing, you could actually acquire a higher knowledge to understand your placement and your issue that you wouldn't backslide in spirit or in mind because it's not working out according to your thoughts and thinking. So watch. He may commit you to death as he did Paul. He may commit you to suffering as he did Job. That is his prerogative. He is sovereign. But it all with a purpose. If he did not have a purpose, then, here we go, he would be the author of frustration and not peace. His purpose is that after we have suffered a while, we would be made perfect. So when people complaining and blaming and pointing finger and all kind of thing like that, they don't want to sit back, relax and ask God, what is your mind in this situation? I want to catch your mind. I don't want to get caught up in my flesh because the flesh is not guided by the spirit. Okay? It's as many as are led by the spirit of God. They are the sons of God. If you yield to your senses and your flesh and your own desires, you wouldn't get very far because you're human. Okay? But you're looking to be quickened from above. So let's go. If he didn't have a purpose, then he would be the author of frustration and not peace. His purpose is that after we have suffered a while, we would be made perfect, be established, strengthened, and settled. As Job says, he put strength in us. You see, he himself suffered from what Christ. He learned obedience by the things that he suffered. He actually made perfect by the things that he suffered. And we have Hebrews 5, 8 and 9 quoted here. Though he was a son, yet learned he obedience by the things which he suffered. What about that long-standing church member who figured that it's supposed to work up because they're there a long time? The Bible says, though he was a son. In other words, Son doesn't give him the right to be excused. Son doesn't give him the right to be entitled. The Bible specifically detailed, though he was a son, yet learned he obedience by the things which he suffered. And being made perfect, 
he became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him. In plain language, here we go, the very character of Jesus was perfected by suffering. And according to Paul, he has left his church, his church, upon the rock I build my church, he has left his church a measure of suffering that they too, by their faith in God, while suffering for him, would come to a place of perfection. Why did he want this? Let's pause a bit. So in other words, you could have a five-story house. You could have 10 cars, 10 ships, 10 planes, 10 rockets. You could be a multi-billionaire. It doesn't exclude you from this world here. Watch. So Paul said, he has left his church a measure of suffering, a measure of suffering, that they too, by their faith in God, while suffering for him, would come to a place of perfection. Why did he want this? And the answer to that is James 1, 2 to 4. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith work at patience, and let patience have a perfect work, that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. And we find out he said patience is perfection, waiting on God and waiting for God. Let's continue quickly. Why does he stand by? The reason is in Romans 8, 17, 18. If children, and we struck that last night, uh, on Wednesday night, then heirs, heirs of God, joint heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may be glorified together. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. Unless we suffer with him, we cannot reign with him. You have to suffer to reign. The reason for this is that character simply is never made without suffering. Character is a victory, not a gift. A man without character can't reign because power, apart from character, is satanic. But power with character is fit to rule. And since he wants us to share, even his throne, on the same basis that he overcame, and is set down in his father's throne, then we have to overcome to sit with him. How could we overcome if there's no test given? And the little, here we go, temporary sufferings we go through now is not worthy to be compared to the tremendous glory that will be revealed in us when he comes. What a treasure laid up for those who are willing to enter into his kingdom too much tribulation. Okay. Now, in trying to do God a service without being as God's will, he's talking about David got caught up in the anointing. The anointing was all right, but in doing it, he got in twos and stepped over the boundary line. What did he do? Instead of putting the ark in its original position, he carried it on a new cart and not over the hearts of the Levites. It was supposed to be carried on the shoulder of Levites, which is over the heart. The word is not in the mind, it's in the heart, not in a new cart. And the new cart represented every denomination there will ever be. God's word must be obeyed. God's word must be carried, not carried by state presbytery or bishops. Here we go. It is the baptism of the Holy Ghost in the heart of man and not some ecclesiastical move. The Holy Spirit is a treasure of God's love in the heart of man and woman to obey. Now, what we are saying, the anointing not supposed to shake you off the word. You have to zone into the word and leave everything out. The anointing, the true anointing, has to make, will make you focus on the word, not on your own thoughts and feelings and emotions and your ideas and your dreams. Now, here this part. They were supposed to put it on their left shoulder, pack the ark, and because it was up over their heart, they had the burden of the word on their heart. So when you get caught up in the word, you get the burden of the word or the burden of what is promised. And we can see tonight why some people doesn't have any burden, how some people get a burden and they operate from that burden and they feel a fulfillment in their lives in praying and seeking God because upon them, they have a burden. See so what he's saying here now. This is so 
big. He says, people have different burdens, burden of their own denomination and so on like that. He said, the burden of how many more you're going to get in your denomination instead of, here we go, the burden of the word of the Lord till people will see only the word and nothing else. If you're seeing Brother Ovid, you missed the boat. If you're seeing the church, you missed the boat. <clears throat> you have to see the word. And you have to see the word given to us in time. And even though God is in eternity, his word must be obeyed in time. Just as Jesus prayed, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. God cannot change anything of his word. His word is original. His word is perfect. And his word must be obeyed. So instead of the burden of the word of God, till the people will see only the word of God and nothing else. No new card. All right. So this is the stretch now we're going to hit. And this is something, something so beautiful. And I want to get it from the teaching on Moses. Well, Ram was teaching, I think this was a Sunday school class, young children, but it has something very, very important that we want to look at in prayer. And he's talking about Amram, Joshi dead. And she said, oh gosh, you're putting all the women to work. It's getting worse and worse. And that night, he said, I'm going up and pray like I never prayed before, Amram. And Baram saying, no, that's the way to pray. Pray like you never prayed before. Really get the business. All right? Don't go and say, Lord, bless so and so, and, and don't take interest. No. When you little boys pray, get down to business. And he said, do you do that in school? God help you in your school and your grades and so on. Do you pray? And he asked that. But here I want to get. So Amram, he goes upstairs. He didn't want no supper. She said, you must eat that. She said, I, I can't do it. You see that. I can't do it. She, she said, you're losing weight. You're nervous. You're, you're pale in your face. You vomit up your food and things. He said, I know what to do. He said, dear, if somebody don't take the people to heart, if somebody don't pray for the people, what will we do? We, we get it worse. Surely sometime God will hear. And he said, God will hear when you get down to business. Just stay there. This time, so he accustomed going upstairs and praying and whatnot. Listen to these words. This time, he goes upstairs different. And when he goes upstairs this time, he kneels down. He puts his hands in the air and holler. That means he's talking loud to God. God, I am speaking to you now. God, thou has ears and you can hear. You have eyes and you can see. You have a memory. I love how it is phrased here. And this could teach us a channel of praying tonight. You know your word. You know your promise. So you can't approach God if you know nothing about God, nothing about what is promise. So the word, the true connection with the word brings a burden. And that burden can get you in the right channel in prayer. So this is how he's praying. You have ears, you, have, you can hear, you have eyes, you can see, you have memory, you know your word, you know your promise. I plead to you, God, look down here, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, that your people are in distress and they are dying. Do something for us, God. So you can apply it to your family, to your wife, to your children, to your home. We have got to have you at once. We have just got to have you or we will perish. We must have you. We just got to if we live. And that's when you really pray. And he prayed. You know, sometimes people, when they pray, they get tired, don't they? He said, but Abraham sometimes gets so tired, I almost faint when I go to pray. A long time, just faint. I go without eating and things for days and pray and pray and pray and preach. I just get to a place, I'm going to faint nearly. But sometimes people get that way. There's no time to give up. So he is dramatizing, continue now. So he goes up to the old creaky steps. So there's a place where he go and pray. I see Yoshibet come by and says, oh, I'm, I'm honey. He says, Yoshibet, you are fine, lovely. She was beautiful, pretty little mother. He kept going and patches her like that. He said, oh, mother, you go back. Put Aaron and little Miriam to bed. I'm going up to pray. And now, if you hear me weeping, don't you come up. Well, but Amram, what are you going to do, honey? You, you're about dead. He said, yes, but I got the burden of the people on my heart. I got to do something about it. I got to stay on my knees. So he said, today, only today, dong and the brick hill, I was dong there. I kept saying, well, cheering up, 
Sharon, God will hear. And one big old man come up and put his hand on his hips and said, when will he hear? When will he hear? You see, people are getting bitter. They are getting against God because they pray and pray and pray and nothing happens. And this one prays and prays and prays and nothing happens. And all the priests say, the days of miracles past. Only thing we can do is just, just get right down to the old taskmasters who worship heathen. But I believe, this is our mom saying, in Jehovah, I believe he still answers prayer. So his little old frail body now, lost a lot of weight, up the creaky steps he goes, and he knees down. And say, oh, Jehovah. And he prayed like he never prayed before. He said, Jehovah, look here. You are real God. We believe that you got ears. We believe you have got eyes. You know all things. We believe you're the God of the Hebrews. And we are the people of promise. We believe you keep your word. Look at these heathens out here. They are taking our cheap labor, building great big roads and idols, everything else. You, Jehovah. Would you set in heaven and let the heathen rule over you? And he said, he said, what we need today is somebody like Amram got the burden on their heart who will stay there and pray it through until heaven is split open yonder and God come down and answer. Now listen to this now. He said, God, do you let the heathens mock at your people like this? Weeks and months and years have passed. We pray constantly the tears bathe he said lord will you permit such a thing i want us today when hundreds of little babies are thrown into the rivers a cesspool and abortion he's talking about that but let's just skip that he said jehovah will you permit such nonsense to go on he will answer one day his wrath is terrible when it's come now we go a little further we find him almost done we find him praying he just gets so tired he lays down he just prays. He just falls on the floor. He can't go any further. And he look, take a little nap. He woke up. What's the matter? He look around where that light was coming from. Standing in the corner, there stood an angel, his sword hanging there on his side. And he rubbed his eyes. He pulled up his knee. He said, Lord, what would you want from me? He said, Amram, I am the angel of God. I have been sent from heaven to tell you God heard your prayers. I've come to tell you that he's going to send a deliverer. He remembers all of his promises. I see the angel now. Look at him. He's pulling out his sword. He pointed to the north. Amram looks. He said, just the point of this sword lays the promised land. And I promise Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, your fathers, that you people would inherit the land. I've heard the groaning of the people. I've heard the crying of the children. I've come down. I want you to know that you're going to play a great part in this. Listen to this part, my God. Amram, because you were faithful in prayer, you were faithful in your house, and about this time next year, Joshibed, your lovely little wife, is going to embrace a little baby boy. And that little baby boy is going to be a deliverer. And do I want to say glory? Oh my God, for his reason, just reason that. That's so exciting. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. I'm going to close. But a brand. Pharaoh was training Moses. Pharaoh had 40 years to train him. Then God took 40 years to train him. Let him forget all about it. Man's training and God's training. Pharaoh was training a son to be a leader, a diplomat, a warrior, a fighter for another coming Pharaoh. No, watch this yet. But God took him, Moses, on the backside of the desert and took all that out of him and showed him in five minutes, time by the burning bush, that he was the living God. It took all fear out of him and got him ready. And I close with these words here. And it's words that you know. God wants his people to pray. And when Israel got so taxed in such a condition that they could not go any further, their time was fulfilled and their burdens was laid further than what they taught, then they begin to pray. And when the people begin to pray, then God begin to hear it was time for that word to be fulfilled. 
So when Amnon and Yoshibet saw it was time for the word to be fulfilled, this is the part. What did they see? They were seeing it was time for the word to be fulfilled. What do you see tonight? Or when I say fulfilled, you have to begin to see time for the word to fulfill in your life. I believe it was Wednesday night we were saying, you cannot claim what is not yours. And this message comes to reveal to you what is yours, what is your property, what God has given to you or released to you, died and paid the price for you. So you don't want to walk in ignorance that you don't know and you don't know what inheritance is about. No, that's why you come to church for. That's why you're here tonight. Let's wrap up here now. Here it is. When Amrad and Yoshibet saw that it was time for the word to be fulfilled, they went to prayer to God. And it is usually those who pray is the one who's got the burden, the one who gets something. It is those who pray that's ordained of God to do so. Let us bow our heads. Father God, I thank you tonight for these words that I was given to share with your people tonight. And may it bring a burden, the burden of the word. May it open up a channel, a channel of prayer. May it open up an understanding, an understanding of their own personal calling by your love, by your election. Knowing that they have been elected and chosen for this hour, they could thank you in advance for what you're about to do in and through them. Because you said, by and through the bride will be fulfilled all that was promised. Bless your sons and daughters here tonight. Give them a special touch. May they have a supernatural experience in their own homes, in their hearts and lives. In Jesus' name I ask it. Praise the Lord. Thank you so much for being here. I'm looking forward to see what the Lord will do. Praise the Lord. So God bless you as we get down in prayer tonight. Praise the Lord.
Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. We bless his name tonight. We praise him tonight. We thank him for his goodness. We thank him for his grace. We thank him for his loving kindness, Father. We praise you. We bless you. We worship you. We honor you. We thank you for your word. We thank you for making yourself known. You're the God of the audience. You're God of your people. Oh, Father, may you come down here, Lord, and bless them. In Jesus' name, I ask it, Father God, as we praise you and worship you and thank you for Lord hearing our prayer and hearing our cry tonight. Have you in the way I pray. In Jesus' name, I ask it. Praise God. Amen. God bless you, saints. I trust you are inspired and charged tonight to call upon the name of the Lord and to see that his love for you is elective love. And to see he didn't call you to wrath or call you to for punishment. He called you that you may be changed and be transformed. One of the things in the Our Father prayer, before it was said, give us this day our daily bread, he said, thy will be done, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Just remember, this ties in with seek first the kingdom of God. Before anything else, don't look at flesh and blood. Look at the promise. Look at what God said. And then in looking at what God said, he who placed you on the earth, he's the only one who have the ability to reveal your place and position. Reveal what you're called to do. And in your situation, you would see like like that, like that um, Jonah, wheel belly up, wheel belly down. You look left, right. It's just like no go. It's just like negative. But because Jonah was called for this purpose, it had to work out that way to accomplish God's purpose. And we as humans may not understand the tribulations, the testings, the trials, the challenges that we have. But at the end of it all, it's for our own purification. It's our own character formation. It is how this word image is going to be formed. This word image that we're talking about, this faith and virtue, is to be formed. It's not just that you have it. It has to be formed. has to be shaped. The pyramid is not a slab, it's not a slab, it's a shaped thing. It's broad at the bottom, it gets smaller at the top. As it get as it get higher at the top now, it's it's sharper, it's it's steep, you could slide off and whatnot. You have to keep climbing. You see? So the challenge is daily bread, uh, your daily prayer, daily faith, daily holding on, knowing that the God we serve, he answers. He answers his, his own is own is in his own timing. You know, I can hear a man say he asked God for wisdom. And God gave him all kind of issues that he could exercise that wisdom. He asked God for patience and God gave him challenges. You know, God answered his prayer. Not what you expect, but how it will unfold out that you could get the discernment, you could get the understanding, you get the patience. So let's close off in a word of prayer at this time. Father God, I thank you for your presence and your love and your people that gathered here tonight in faith, believing you that you would hear them. And I pray you hear every prayer that was prayed Visit them, Lord, and confirm your word to their hearts and lives. Bless your coming Sunday service. May you anoint Brother Yadam in a special way and use him mightily for your kingdom, for your honor and your glory. And bless your coming meetings in India, Father God, that I'll be attending to. May you visit those brethren in India, Father. May your power, Lord, and your fire and your presence, Lord, pour it upon your people. May they get clarity of word, of vision, and revelation and inspiration. Granted, Lord, we commit our lives into your hands and our future into your hands. Bless your people, Lord, as they, oh God, whatever they have to do, may your presence be with them in a special way to know that you're not dead, but you're alive to confirm and to vindicate your word. Remember all the sick among us. Remember the ministry, the elders, the deacons, the, the ushers, Lord. Remember all the sick, Lord, the, the weary, the tired, the Caleb's, all who are challenged. Oh God, may you anoint them and inspire them. Give them great comfort knowing that they're in your will by your word and your love to them is elective. Granted, Father, in Jesus' name I ask it. Amen and amen. God bless you. Thanks again for being here. Love you guys. God bless.